I grew up in LA and in addition to Snoop's Doggy Style and Dr. Dre's Chronic, Stone Throw Records was just one of the sounds that my friends and I gravitated toward. I had a chance to sit with Wolf, uh, founder of Stone Throw, and we spoke about his run-in with some of the greats. Pretty much met like every hero of mine that I wanted to meet. You know, I met Stevie Wonder. He was in a restaurant and, and I actually followed him into the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> and he was at the urinal, like literally, you know, urinating. I went up to his manager or bodyguard, whoever it was with him, and I said, hey, he, he could kind of tell the intensity like that I wanted to talk to Stevie Wonder. He's like, this isn't the right time or place. And I, and I was like, you know what? He's right, damn, my bad, yeah. <laughs> but Stevie overheard the conversation and he was like, no, no, no. Stevie called him over and then I was like, oh man, I got in trouble. I was super nervous at that point. I was like, oh God, I got 30 seconds to give him my spiel. And I was like, yeah, have you ever heard of Mad Lib? And he's like, nah. I said, well, have you ever heard of uh, Blue Note Records? He's like, come on, of course I know Blue Note Records. I said, well, Mad Lib did an album for Blue Note Records. He said, well, I said, uh, have you ever heard of John Faddis? He's like, yeah, I love John Faddis. And he's like, well, that's Mad Lib's uncle. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, so I said, yeah, Mad Lib did a whole album of your music and we want to get it to you. And then I had the record with me, I gave it to him. I got a little offended that he didn't look at the CD cover. I'm like, man, and then I forgot that he was blind. Was, you know, just shaking his hand, it really made me nervous, you know. Like, wow, this person really exists. He's not just like a folklore hero, or, you know. Prince came to one of my shows before, and Prince was my hero when I was in high school. I actually, I dyed my 501s purple in his honor, and I used to wear purple pants to school. And people would say, oh, he's like fruity or whatever, you know. They'd give me a hard time. I got really drunk that night, actually, and thank God I didn't know Prince was in the audience till after, because if I knew, I probably would have tried to grab, you know, pull him up on stage and stuff. But her Egyptian lover, like I work with him now, and I went to his show when I was 15, and uh, it was sold out, and I didn't get in. And I, my mom dropped me off, and this was before cell phone, so I had to wait outside at the show, you know. And then, like a couple hours later, she came back and got me, but. Definitely those memories always like live in my head and, and that's what I do this for more than like any other reason, you know? Like just meeting those people that influence me. And it just reminds me how impressionable like 15, 16 year old kids are. And you know, when, I, when there's people that age that like Quasimodo or anything that I'm involved with, like that means more to me than people my age group. What's up, this is Wolf with Opio with restinbeats.com.